In November of 1978, four employees from a popular fast food chain were abducted from their workplace in Speedway, Indiana. The case shocked the nation and remains one of the most notorious unsolved murders in American history. Join us as we dive into the baffling details of the infamous Burger Chef murders. This is Red Web. Well, hello there, Task Force. Welcome back to another episode of Red Web, the show all about unsolved mysteries, true crime, cryptids, conspiracies. I'm immune personally, Trevor Collins, that's me, wearing my tinfoil-lined snapback Task Force hat. Alfredo, however, my co-host, Alfredo Diaz, not protected today. Oh, I'm exposed. I didn't even think about that. That's right. It looks like a... Get Normal, him in the brain. Sleek, cool you hat. It, boss. Well, you're actually, it's actually functional. That's right. <laughs> On the outside, I look stylish. On the inside, protected. protected. I am not. Um, <laughs> I've solved this case. Boom. It was a hamburglar. <laughs> <laughs> it was the competing was franchise. Competing franchise. <laughs> uh, terrifying. Yeah. Unfortunate. Very. You said this was at a speedway? This was at, no, okay. So I understand the confusion. As an Indiana local, I know Speedway, Indiana, like the back of my little hand. Not a Speedway, like a gas station, but this is Speedway, Indiana, home of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Ah. Indy 500, Brickyard 400, NASCAR. Okay. NASCAR. Grand Prix. So you go in the circle 500 times. Yay! Yep. Well, 500 miles. Oh. Yeah. Isn't it just a mile, one loop? I don't remember the track uh, circumference. Oh. She's a humble track. She's a simple track. Yeah. But she's mine. <laughs> she's mine. Yeah. Um, so is this a burger joint that's like, like, you know, when you go to stadiums and sporting events and all that right. kind of stuff. So is this burger joint like in the stadium? No. So actually Speedway is kind of like a town or like a little suburb of Indianapolis. So it's just named that because it is also the home of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, but it's otherwise just a suburb. And yeah. so this uh, Burger Chef is an old franchise that defunct, it went defunct in 1996, but Burger Chef was the name of the franchise. It's just like as if you were to pull up to a Wendy's. Oh, okay. So it's a standalone building standalone just in the drive area. drive through burger joint. Mm-hmm. Got it. Otherwise, okay. just consider it to be West Side Indianapolis. Okay. Yeah. Terrifying. Very. It's, a, it's say, a creepy case. Yeah. I've told this story before. My parents met at a fast food joint. My mom was ringing up my dad's meal at a mm-hmm, McDonald's, mm-hmm. and he got her number on a McDonald's napkin. So I'm loving it because I'm here now. Uh, <laughs> she walked up. She said, I'll have that number 10. <laughs> and she points to him, and, she, and he goes, that'll only cost a dime. And he points to her. Yeah, that's it's, right. Yeah, Christian, I don't, even, I don't even know if he's smooth. on mic, but he's giggling. It's smooth. Yeah. But so, like. A little piece of me is like oh. a little happy meal. <laughs> was, yeah, you a little yeah, happy, yeah, meal. Yeah, I'm a happy meal. <laughs> the little piece of me, I'm just like, oh, terrifying. Yeah. Like that can happen in a place like that. Absolutely. So we're going to go through the events of this particular case, and it starts off as a very humdrum case, which quickly escalates to, as we know now, an unsolved cold case murder. Damn. We're going to go through all the details of what went down that night, as far as we have it, and then as the investigation unfolds as police get more information they dive deeper so we're going to walk you through all of that as usual we're going to go through the the theories which in this case are mostly suspects so without further ado let me take you back to 1978 it was a friday night november 17th in particular brian kring drove to the burger chef he worked at in speedway indiana on 5725 crawfordsville road this building is still there it's unoccupied very eerily empty And so you can go to Google Maps right now if you're so inclined and uh, take a peek at this empty building. Burger Chef, as I kind of said earlier, was a fast food chain in Indiana. It actually got bought out by Hardee's, a.k.a. Carl's Jr. And uh, this took me too long in my 32 years of life to realize, but Hardee's was the Eastern and Midwest name for that franchise. Oh. It's the same thing. I just knew they were the same thing. I just didn't know what made one... Right. Named the other. It's I don't know why either, but yeah, on the western side of the US and the southwest areas, it's called Carl's Jr. I so did you not and I know that. Yeah, we I all kind of grew up with different thing. names on yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Quick question. I'm yeah. sorry. I love fast food. Okay. Well, right. I mean, you were born of it. Yeah, so, yeah, like, yeah. I don't have a choice. Fast food. Okay. I don't have a choice. We were right? Ronald McDonald's it. godfather. Like, I don't have a choice. Uh, Grimace is my uncle. Um, <laughs> Wait, so you're in you're in on this case. Hamburglar is your godfather. You know? But um Okay. When's the last time any of us have had a Carl's Jr. burger? 
once in my life. Are there any? It's called call June still a thing. Mm-hmm. It still is, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like Arby's. It's like why does it exist? It's every now and then you see one. You go, oh, I forgot uh, you're still around. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm just and no, that's for, for the sure. task force too. Like, yeah, we'd love to hear from you guys. Like, when's the last time you had a Carl's Jr. burger? Um. Okay, so let's come back to Brian Kring. He had been on a date that night with another coworker. When he drove by the restaurant, he saw that one of his coworkers, another coworker, their car was missing from the parking lot. So after the date, he dropped her off at her home and then drove back to the burger chef. He essentially just wanted to assist with the closing. He's like, it looks like they're a person down or something's going on. Let me go help out as it approaches midnight. No, that is so nice of him. So nice. And then it bit him in the butt. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. So more details on this missing car. He noticed the car was missing and it turns out one of his coworkers had called out of their shift due to their car breaking down. So that was the missing person. So per Kring, another coworker named Daniel Davis stayed late in order to cover for this coworker's shift. So someone had already fulfilled that obligation, very nicely of them, but Kring was still there to help close down. You also have another individual, Mark Flemons. He was working that night and was actually covering for the girl that Kring was on a date with. It's kind of hard to keep track of, yeah. but essentially there were four people, including mm-hmm. Kring, working that night. It's just what makes this confusing is that there was a lot of shifting shifts. Yeah, so, I mean, it makes sense. People calling out, people... The, the crazy part was people jumping in on the shifts to help out. Like I, that. that is huge. That's I, awesome. I didn't have that when I was a teen. Exactly. I woke up in the middle of the night, someone called me. I was on bed rest from my wisdom teeth getting plucked. And they were like, can you fulfill my obligations? And I said, huh? I can't understand English right now. I drooled a little bit of blood and they said, right, and hung up. So Kring, when he arrived, unfortunately, he found the back door of the restaurant had been hanging open, just open in the wind. The lights were still on in the restaurant. The restaurant was completely empty and his coworkers were nowhere to be seen. This included the aforementioned 16-year-olds, Daniel Davis and Mark Flemons, but the other two working that night, 17-year-old Ruth Ellen Shelton, and their 20-year-old assistant manager, Jane Freet. In the manager's office, Kring found that the safe was open with empty money bags and a roll of tape lying nearby. It was at this point that he decided to call the police. Oh, so this is like a, like a, probably like an armed robbery type situation that it just does, went further. It does seem like that might be the case. Okay. So when looking at the safe, he realized that $581 was missing, but otherwise there were no signs of a struggle. Police believed that the workers, being teenagers, all took the money to go out partying since Freet's 1974 Chevrolet Vega was missing from the parking lot. Police assumed that they would turn up eventually and thought nothing of it and just decided to kind of keep an eye on it, but otherwise not look any further. One interesting piece of counter evidence to this idea that they were simply going out partying states that Freet and Sheldon's purses were both left behind at the restaurant. Police believed that they were simply being teenagers and not thinking Perhaps they were so eager to go out that they simply forgot their belongings. Their manager, however, doubted this theory since all four of these employees were great employees, that they were more responsible than that, and they wouldn't just forget things around, leave the door open for their own selfish whims. The police allowed the restaurant to operate as normal the next day, which, unfortunately, in hindsight, is not a good move because it means that the restaurant was cleaned and no photos were taken of the scene. At this point, police had no reason to suspect foul play, so the scene was simply forgotten. Fingerprints, accoutrement, anything wiped from the scene. I mean, yeah, I mean, we've all watched crime shows, you know what I mean? Dramas, all that kind of stuff. Uh, Law and Order, CSI Miami, takes off his glass every time. Yeah! Wow! wow! But um, you gotta say a good pun. That's, that's true. Uh, <laughs> but, like, it, it, and the thing there is, don't mess with anything on the scene Mm -hmm. like especially well you're not like so far into we had this discussion before but i don't think dna was during that time uh i think that was a little 70s no no not during the 70s i think that was like a like a late 80s 90s thing yes but still the the hair follicle fingerprints Mm -hmm. anything that could expose someone and yeah, I mean, well, burger also, joints for the most the part, too. The tape in the they, money bags. Yeah. That yeah. were left at the scene. Oh, yeah. Got tossed out. That's really unfortunate. Even then, I, w- I don't know. Like, 
that's still technically a crime. It's still technically the a crime. The employees are robbing from, they're taking money. Or someone, yeah. Or, or someone is, you know what I mean? And so I, I just don't know why you wouldn't like tag in bag as evidence. They in probably, some way, shape, or form. I'm just playing devil's advocate. They're probably looking at 581. They're like, man, that's what insurance is for. This is too petty. Let's just leave it be and keep an ear out. That's true. It's just unfortunate because we know so much more now looking back. Yeah. 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 I, like, I remember there was a time when my bike got stolen and it just wasn't enough for the police to do anything because the price In of the there. bike, because you know what I mean? Because it wasn't high enough of a price to like charge for a certain, I don't know, the degree yep. of a crime, essentially. Yep. And so the cop just kind of like, eh, I mean, it's sick. It's nothing again, really we could do about it. Right. I, I totally understand that. It's just such a gut punch. I had the same thing happen many years ago. One of our little cameras saw somebody come into our garage, take my bike, ride off, and I have to sit there and go, ouch. Yeah, you know? Nothing just, you can really do. It is what it is. So that next day went on, but no one had been contacted by these four employees. Then the next morning, Freet's car was found abandoned and unlocked in a park close to the police station. Police began to believe that the employees had instead been abducted and began to investigate the case from that angle. They started to consider that the teens must have left in a struggle since that back door had been left open. That was really the only sign of a struggle if we're taking the manager's experience with these employees that they're responsible, they wouldn't leave things behind. The door being open does seem like a bit of a rush, like something's going on, they're being pressured out, let's move quick kind of thing. And that's where the investigation starts to get a little deeper. I think the interesting part of what you just laid out on the table here was the car was found near the police station? Yeah, so Freet's car was missing from that night, and it arrived or was found abandoned near the police station the next morning. There's not really a whole lot of information that we go into on that car after this, Christian. No, not Because really. there's nothing really comes up of this. Yeah, from what we could see, they didn't really find anything yeah. substantial from trying to dig into the car some more. They so, yeah, this is kind of the end of the, the trail there. Yeah, so that's one cold trail, but, oh, there's a hot one to come in. Okay. Yeah. So now the investigation begins to go a little deeper. Now they're investigating this not as a petty theft sort of situation, but now as an abduction situation. On November 18th, a 16-year-old told police that he and his girlfriend had seen two strange men outside of Burger Chef right before they closed the night of the murders. This would have been around 11.30 p.m. that night. Because, as the estimates continues to stand in this cold case, that something went down between 11 and midnight. And so this is where the eyewitness come in, and they say, while sitting in the parking lot next door, these men reportedly approached the witnesses and told them to leave because, quote, there had been lots of vandalism going on. Basically, they're just kind of doing their thing. Maybe, I don't know, they don't have an overlook over the city, so they just go to the burger chef, go next door, make out in the car, and then mysterious figures come over and say, you should skedaddle. For, oh, I mean, I guess they got lucky. Yeah, and I guess they, they did leave. And then, like, I mean, at that point, you have, like, key witnesses. I mean, they exposed their face and everything. Yes. Like, that's wild. This is huge for like, this I, case. I, like, I wouldn't, because, you know, the, the first thing that would have came out of their uh, the, vic, uh, the um, witness's mouth was, like, they're wearing a mask or some mm -hmm. kind of disguise. This is, they just plainly walked up with their face exposed and, like, y'all should get out of here. They handed the driver's license over to me, showed me their name, right, their, their social, height, their weight, their social, and then said, and go then, on and get Yeah, it. you want to get out of here. Yeah, it's very fortunate. I mean, of course, this is unsolved, but this gave so much to the case that we're going to dive into from. But both of these two men were described as white men in their 30s. One had a beard. The other was clean shaven with fair colored hair, like a light brown. Oh. The police created composite sketches based on the eyewitness's description and released them to the public on November 21. So they didn't really waste any time, so the memory didn't get too fuzzy, which is kind of nice. And I'll show you now, Fredo, the, the two kind of drawings they did. Task Force, as always, we'll post those on our social, at Red Web Pod. You want to have those visual attributes. Or on our YouTube channel, I believe we pop those up for you. Yeah. I mean, one's a little scruffy, one's very clean cut. Mm-hmm. Here's a question, and What's maybe up? this is a case follows episode. We hire, what is the profession again that the, where they draw the people's faces? Oh, oh, now I just went blank. Talking about like the, the I think police just, sketch yeah, artist? Yeah, yeah. I, just, I think it's just I, police sketch artist. Yeah. Here, here's, here's what we do. We, for a case boss episode, we don't show them who we are. We take turns having us describe 
like each other to a police sketch artist. That's a really <laughs> fun idea. I like that. <laughs> and, really and, then, yeah. and then see how accurate we can be. Yeah, that's really good. I like that. Um, that being said, yeah, they got very, very lucky. Another thing that I want to harp on is the fact that, like, we know how it is with uh, missing persons cases. The first, like, 48 hours are the most crucial. Mm -hmm. And it's just unfortunate that it wasn't seen as that initially. And so that's just time just out the window. It's that first 24 hours are yeah. bleeding away because yeah. they didn't know any better. So now we have these composite sketches, which will, like I said, come back to come in handy in a frustrating way, but they'll come in handy. Two days after the disappearance, kind of now you're at that 48 hour window. On Sunday, November 19th, around 3 p.m., a couple hiking in Johnson County found the bodies of Davis and Shelton. This area specifically was about 20 miles or 32 kilometers from Speedway, or if you prefer, about 40 minute drive away from the area. This part I wanna say is a bit gruesome, but it's necessary information for the sake of the case. These two had been shot with a 38 caliber firearm. And according to the Indianapolis Times, they found Freet 100 yards away. She had been stabbed after a possible escape attempt. And about 75 yards away in the opposite direction, they found Flemons, who had suffered blows to the head, possibly from a chain. Autopsies showed that he had choked on his own blood. And the next part will be important for the sake of a confession we're going to discuss in the theories. But according to investigator Ken York, quote, some of the bruising on his head and shoulders was estimated at being an hour or two old prior to death implying that some of these contusions he had were pre-existing and it does start to help build some of the theories as to what happened here as you have two individuals davis and shelton found in close proximity off at an angle 100 yards one way you then have freet and then 75 yards the other way you have lemons the only weapon at the scene was the knife though the handle itself had been broken off and was missing they were all still in their uniforms and all valuable items were still on their persons. Police no longer believed that this was a robbery or at least that money was not the only motive in play, obviously because of those personal effects. Interesting. Mm -hmm. You'd think that like they robbed the place, things got heated, things got emotional, they decided we got to take them with us. And then eventually they're just like, well, we can't let you live because you've seen us. I think it's pretty apparent at this point that they're just wanting to expose their faces. Mm -hmm. um, so they know too much. They've seen too much. And here we go out into the woods to murder them. Right, man. I mean, your gut check is totally on and we're going to build on some of those feelings that you're, you're kind of exposing. Cause yeah, I mean, and, and another thing too, with regards to the spread of this particular scene is that it got police thinking that, while we did have these two suspects with those composite sketches, there may have been more people in play because all four employees were killed using different weapons and it would be harder for one or two people to corral all four of these employees, take them out in varying areas. Like it would just be very difficult to kind of manage that sort of scene. Yeah. And so this will open up yet another theory that is maybe there was three, four or even more people oh, involved. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, it doesn't seem, or at least so far, it doesn't seem like they were, like, tied up and mm -hmm. then executed. Um, it kind of just seemed like they were freely walking around. Um, dang. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's it's certainly a gruesome scene, and it paints a, a vivid image of what could have da gone down that night. But whatever the motive for the crime, whether it was robbery or a drug-related sort of situation, it might have started off as air quotes petty like petty robbery or something like that but it clearly spiraled beyond that and that's what the police were kind of thinking here was that it might have started as something if you will relatively small and that it just went wrong that's that what some, i think yeah, yeah that just went way south with all the evidence at the restaurant gone investigation relied purely on word of mouth and i will say jumping to kind of modern day i was reading about the case and you brought up dna police are or have actually openly expressed their interest in exploring DNA investigation. I don't think they've made much headway on that, but it is something, it's, it's a tool that they've explored in During recent this, years. Oh. Mm -hmm. But it's still obviously unsolved. Now, some of the Speedway citizens speculated that this murder was part of the Speedway bombings, since the perpetrator for that event was still at large. It's a whole other mystery in and of itself, but very simply, this was a series of eight homemade bombs that went off in random locations throughout Speedway, Indiana from September 1st through September 6th, 
in 1978, simply two and a half months prior to this event going down. So I can see the obvious desire to draw the conclusion and say, maybe these are the same individuals doing this, like some other different type of crime, you know? I feel like that's a jump. It is a bit of a jump. It's a different MO. Uh, but yeah. it's it's just like I real, same yeah, three months. Yeah, know? it's in the same time frame. So you want to like connect it like a lot of mysteries. You want to kind of like group things together mm -hmm. and then try to theorize on that because people like theorizing on these mysteries. Well, you uh, also want to feel safe if you grab somebody. Yeah, oh, 100%. You know, you're like, oh, all of the things are now solved. So many things that happened bad this year. Like you, you, I can connect it in my head and it all comes down to this one person that yeah. was caught. Yeah, definitely gives you solace. Terrifying. That anyone could just make a home explosive and then just drop it off wherever. Dude, that was happening. I, re I remember in college, even here in Austin, not too long ago, maybe a handful of years ago, it was just happening. That stuff just happens. And it's it's spooky. It's unnerving. It's scary. Deeply upsetting. But yeah, there's some gnarly people yeah. out there, suffice to say. But ultimately, the weapons were never found and many leads went cold, leaving this case unsolved and open to this day. So with that said, I think we should move into the theories, talk about some of these suspects, see how these build on some of the gut instincts that you were having, because, man, we get, I'm just going to say this, we get frustratingly close, I feel. No! And, uh, and again, I'm not going to say it again, but you know where we've ended. Yeah. Modern day. Ugh. Hello there, Task Force. It's that moment in the time in the episode where I depart the seas of the episode, but it's not just me this time. It's me, Trevor, Alfredo, Christian, we're all hanging out. Giving you the lowdown on what's happening here at Red Wing. I like how you named yourself. I do name myself every time. <laughs> and, it's, and, and it's weird because I just do it because I've done it, but I name myself twice in every episode. Yeah. And I go, you know who it is, yeah. but I'm going to say it anyway. There you go. Just to remind you. And I also got really sultry on that too. <laughs> Looking you in your guys' eyes. I followed. Yeah. It is Pride Month. Happy Pride Month, everybody. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We just had our, our Pride merch drop. We've got yeah. Mothman with the Pride flag. Uh, it's a navy shirt with a little decal on the left breast area. We also have a sticker decal, so you can take Mothman wherever you want. Your suitcase, your back window, stick him anywhere. Dude, like your little, like your water bottle, your flask. Water stuff. bottle, you yeah. Know, like your flask. Your stuff. friend. I bought a big one, and I went, oh, people put stickers on these things. Mm -hmm. Lots of little some, room. I gotta have at least one red web sticker. Right, so you can show your pride for pride while you hydrate. <laughs> there was a little rhyme in there. It, look, he, but I gave up on it halfway through. You know what I, mean? I got what you were going for. Yeah, I got a thousand yeah. yard stare right now. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we've got that. Also, in time for the uh, hot months to come, if you're in the northern hemisphere, summertime approaches. And what better way to celebrate the summertime <laughs> with a summer squonk? We got a summer squonk pin. It's squonk <laughs> with some sunnies and an umbrella. He's hanging out on the beach. He's just chilling. He's just chilling. It's my how, favorite pin we've done. It's so good. <laughs> it's how, so good. how did we become a place? <laughs> We're a squonk just, podcast now. Just people love and congregate <laughs> to praise the squonk. Yeah. It was the weirdest thing that was ever presented to me on this show. Mm -hmm. And now it's just as just as in weaved. It's like weaved <laughs> in as much as baby hands. Is. Yeah. Oh man, baby hands. I haven't thought about that name in episodes. <laughs> It's been a while. He's thought about you, and he's not happy. We are 50% movies, 40% squonk, 10% baby hands, because they're a little small. Yeah. There's a lot of them. They just don't constitute Very a lot tiny. of volume. But, yeah, that's what's going on in our world. Thank you all for the continued love and support in the various ways the community has engaged with each other, whether it be the subreddit, which is, it's like unofficially official, officially unofficial, I don't know. It's, it's self-run by you guys, the task force. I love to pop in every now and then, answer questions, chat with you all, but we also have... Twitter, Instagram, YouTube comments, Rooster Teeth app comments. Love to see all of it. And I continue to read those five-star reviews that you guys keep leaving. Really appreciate it. With that said, we have some ads for today. This episode of Red Web is sponsored by BetterHelp. Guys, it can be really hard to find a balance between giving others what they need and giving yourself what you need. Oh, 100%. I got to support you guys all the time, but I also have to support myself. Finding the balance can be very tough, and so can keeping the healthy boundaries for yourself. But... Therapy can give you the tools to find more balance in your life so you can keep supporting others, my boys, Jillian, without leaving yourself behind as well. I really enjoy how simple their experience is. I've gone to their website and it's a very simple quiz that you go to to kind of give them an idea of what kind of therapist can help you. They want to curate a more specified experience to make sure that they can help you with your specific needs. It's very easy 
And I also really enjoy just how flexible their service is. If you ever need to switch a therapist, the person's not working out for any reason, they make yeah. it super seamless. There's no price. I, I really appreciate that piece. See, I love that because like just the thought of, you know, it's a, it's a big hurdle to be like, oh, therapist, I want to mm -hmm. go to therapy. And then on top of that, like where do you start? Right. You just start Googling. Finding, finding is the hurdle. Right? Like, yeah. I like that. So let me answer a bunch of questions mm -hmm. that I could do mm -hmm. and then, you know, give me a list that might work for me. Right. This is what I'm challenged with. And they go, we got you. If you're thinking of starting therapy, BetterHelp is a great option that's easy and accessible and one of my favorite parts, it's entirely online and designed to be convenient and flexible, and they'll work with your schedule. All you got to do is fill out, like I said, that brief questionnaire, and you'll get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can always switch to a new therapist at any time for no additional charge. Find more balance with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash RedWeb today to get 10% off your first month. Once again, that's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash RedWeb. This episode of Red Web is also brought to you by RTX. Hello, everybody. It is us, Red Web. We are going to RTX this summer, July 7th through 9th. It's happened every year thus far, and we're excited to go back. We got the annual meeting of the minds. Fred, what else we got? We have got an escape room. Ooh. I partner. cannot express <laughs> how cool that is. It's so cool. It's one of the coolest escape rooms that we've got to kind of be in, because we're partnering with the escape game nationwide known and they have such cool rooms that we had the opportunity to step into one of their really cool kind of woodsy themed cabin themed ones yeah. and create a cryptid encounter look task force it, mm. there was r d put behind this okay trevor and i we went in we scoped out the best one we finished it at a really good time you can't beat the time it's, just not, it. it's just not beatable World best <laughs> don't even think about it it's unfortunate but mm -hmm, like it's mm -hmm. just it's world record set the bar breaking too high. can't reach the bar Right. That being Hands too said, small. we <laughs> tweaked it. Right. We tweaked it to customize it for you. Right. For you. So if you know this podcast, you might have a leg up. But yeah, we're still going to make it a challenge. You'll, you'll, yeah, you'll have a leg Still up. make it a challenge. God, it's cool. Give me some Easter eggs. We've had some meetings to, to talk ideas. Yeah. It's yeah. going to be very red webified. Absolutely. So all those ins and outs, the jokes that you like, but also the oohs and ahs of the, of the cryptid encounter will definitely be in there. Super stoked. And it's also, by the way, I just got to say, it's included in the badge. If you want to get a badge, go to rtxaustin.com. A fantastic spread of other podcasts are going to be there, like our friends over at Stinky Dragon, Dungeons and Daddies, 30 Morbid Minutes, Face Jam, Anma, Face, and so many more. We're also going to be there representing our other team, our gaming team, Achievement Hunter, and Rooster Teeth, the whole brand. It's going to be a party. There's a lot of people there. Yeah. So if you want to come hang out, rtxaustin.com, July 7th through 9th. Happy to see you there. We got so much going on. Ooh, I see some of the guests. Therapy Gecko, Super Carlin Brothers, New Rock Stars, so much more. Badges for this three-day fun fest are available as low as $55. Task Force, we'd love to see you there. We Man, somebody came last year with a car, with a custom Task Force decal, all the whole oh, yeah. That blew was my awesome. Mind. I it thought was, that was, forgot about it that. Was a Task Force vehicle. Yeah. It was Task like, Mobile. It was like a Ford Explorer. <laughs> Task Mobile. It was Task Force cool. One. <laughs> it, it was like a Ford Explorer. It was like a, a nice, beautiful, deep it red. It was beautiful. And it was, it, it was like it was an actual Task Force, like enforcer vehicle. It, it was, was so cool. It was awesome. I'll be real. I thought it was a Forza render. It looked so pristine. Yeah, and then it, it just, um, and then the the guy and his spouse or his significant other, I should say, his partner showed up at the time. Like we took photos, did some signings, hung out for a little bit, chatted, and he's like, "I got it here. You want to come see it?" I'm like, oh, "Absolutely!" <laughs> it was so neat, we very cool. We don't deserve that. I'll be honest. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm also trying to plan. I haven't figured out which day. It's going to be Friday, Saturday, Sunday. But one of those days, guys, I want to do like a red out where everybody that's there for task force, maybe Saturday. I don't know. All wears red that day, comes in, will like red out the floor, take a big selfie. And I also think we're going to have exclusive merch sold there as well. And we I forgot are. about it until this moment, but it's a Red Web Pictures. Like our film division finally has a logo. Oh, we're going to have some movies. Yeah, I remember some we, we, we talked about that. Yeah, they, went look, over. they look so good. We got they movie look, posters. They look, they look awesome. I remember we were talking about like the, the titles and the coloring. What they yeah. Look like. yeah it's, <laughs> I'll tease, I'll tease cool. one. I love all three, but I'll tease my favorite. One is a kind of Fredo and I as Ghostbusters parody <laughs> with a giant baby hands in the sky <laughs> taking over the city. It's amazing. 
And we have two other posters as well, all going to be available at RTX. But otherwise, yeah, like I said, RTXAustin.com. I could go on and on. It's one of my favorite things we get to do here at this company. But very eager to see you all come out, hang out, and we'll see you there. With that said, let's get right back into the mystery. One general theory is that one or more of the employees knew the murderers personally, that whoever did this had some sort of direct relationship with the victims. Perhaps a group planned to rob the burger chef, but recognized one of the employees, which could potentially escalate the situation to more dire consequences, if you especially didn't expect to see that person there. To go even deeper, some people theorize that the robbers recognized Flemons in particular as he was not originally scheduled to be working that night. So, perhaps this could mean that it's someone in his immediate social circle, if not just a coincidence. I didn't even think about that. But like, what do you do, like, say we, we, we end this podcast, tomorrow night, Trevor and I break into the Plato Palace and just steal a bag and full of Play-Dohs. you tell anybody, Christian. And then we find Christian there checking something, like bringing out a, a whole bunch of Play-Dohs. He's got to come with us. He knows who we are. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, I never right, thought right. of Like, we've talked about so many, mm-hmm. like, so many cases of, like, robbery and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. With the coincidence that you just run into someone that you know or knows of you. Yeah. It, like, I, that, that flipped on its head. Yeah. Like, stakes are high. Tensions high. Emotions are high. I can see how they're just like, oh, no. Like, you're, you know, my cousin's daughter's niece's friend that I saw at a quinceanera last week or something oh, like no. that. Oh, no. Not the quinceanera like, bus. The, 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 the jig is up. Like, right. It was like, you, what do you do? You panic, you take them with you. And right, you, right. And then there's that whole situation you've seen in cinema where it's just like, what do we do with them? Right. I don't know. And then they're figuring it out. Exactly. A hundred percent. I can totally see that being the case, especially if you're like, okay, Flemons, let me know. This is the safe. This is the situation. Let's hit yeah. it up. Well, he's not working tonight. Let's roll in. Oh God, it's him! Yeah, uh, adi, 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 adi. and then true. I guess you got to take him. Yeah, I mean, if you did leak uh, information, yeah. Ooh. Now, unfortunately, that doesn't mean we got much further beyond that. I mean, that is a major theory, and it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, but that didn't mean that suddenly suspects were falling off the tree. So it's one step closer, with so many more questions remaining. Now, with regards to this particular idea, others suspect that one of the employees may have owed money whether it be for drugs or something else, and then the events unfolded from there. So some kind of micro theory that, well, they were there for a robbery, then it went off. And then some were saying, well, maybe it was just a drug deal, and then it went off. Either way, it went off. I can see that. Young kids wanting some drugs. Mm -hmm. Then like, oh, hey, my drug dealer just drives up and has to be the drugs. I hand him some money, maybe a, a basket of fries or something like that. Basket of fries. And then I get my drugs, he gets his money, and we're good. Bada and boom, then, bada bing. Then, you know, yeah. we used to make deals back in the day when I worked at the uh, the old custard factory. Mm. We'd be swapping Zaz for scoops. <laughs> so, oh yeah, we were making what? We were wheeling and dealing. It's like hot box pizza like the across 1950s, the street. We would look bro. back and forth, and we'd be like, "All right, <laughs> ghost is clear." How we'd old run is over this some man. <laughs> we'd run over some ice cold scoops, and they would run back the Zaz. It was great. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I'll be a, real. What an but, operation. I'll be real. I think somebody involved had something to do with drugs because it always smelled like skunk in the back. <laughs> oh, but yeah. I was, I was clear sign. I was a why a wide eyed <laughs> summer child going. It, why is it stinking here? And someone's like, hey, 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 chill hey, out. hey don't chill say out. nothing. Don't say nothing. Hey, no. Okay. But why wouldn't they just have them come outside, right, and then grab them from there? Right. I guess like or maybe, maybe cover you want... your dang fa- I'm not going to give any yeah, advice to criminals. Right. Because my advice is bad, criminals. Don't listen to it. But I guess they also wanted the money. Yeah. Yeah, cuz the safe it, beca- you could argue it that way. Yeah, th- <laughs> I guess you're right cuz like you wouldn't be like, "All right, let's do this drug deal." Oh my god, I recognize that person. Screw it. I'm going to go take their 581. Like unless it was like, "I guess I'll pay out of that safe." And then they peeped the 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 bands and they said, "Okay, I'm going to grab some of those too." Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It, it's, it's frustrating because, again, the scene was wiped, but somebody came to play. When they bring tape, they were simply, in my mind, I'm just going off the rails now. This is my own personal theory. The tape and the bags of money indicated that the purpose was robbery. They wanted to fill the bags, but it was so few yeah, monies that they left all the other empty bags for some reason. And the tape was maybe to tie people up. 
or to bound like their mouths. Yeah. But then they said, eh, screw it, let's just take them with us. I don't know. But messy. Yeah. And they unfortunately got away with it. Mm hmm. These next two theories, though, like I started to tease, start to get really, really deep. And I'm very eager to hear what you think about this one. So another theory involves a drunken confession a few towns over. In 1978, while investigating a lead in Greenwood, love Greenwood, have a few friends over that way. Oh, okay. Cool. Oh, yeah. I played a few D&D games down in Greenwood in my day, but that's enough of me. 1978, same year that this went down, investigation led to Greenwood. Detectives overheard a man speaking at a bar about being involved with the Burger Chef murders. Okay, some progress. Greenwood, just so everyone knows, it's another suburb of Indianapolis, about 20 miles southeast of Speedway. Or if you just want to look at the giant metropolitan Indianapolis, it's right south below it. Police took the man in for a polygraph test. In this polygraph test, he passed, essentially with flying colors, claiming that he was actually not involved, as he was drunkenly saying in the bar. And when it comes to polygraph tests, they are lie detecting tests, we all kind of see them in shows, but it's worth noting that these are not admissible in the court of law. So something to think about, they're also not 100% accurate, lots of debates on that front. However, he did give some names to people that he claimed were actually involved with a gang that habitually robbed restaurants. Okay, so we're making some progress, I guess. One of these two people was in the town of Franklin, Indiana, 30 miles or 38 kilometers from Speedway. For posterity, this might get confusing, but we're gonna call this first person Shotgun Man. And we're gonna get into that later. Okay. So just to recap real quick, man in the bar, I'm part of the Burger Chef murders. All right, we need to lie detect you. He passes, he goes, I'm not actually part of it, but here's two people that constantly do that stuff. What a wild chain of events yeah. to get to uh, the possible, like to just get suspects, to be mm -hmm. honest. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? But also, I guess, yeah, I mean, it, it, like, I don't know, man. These don't sound like the smartest criminals. Loose lips. And so to have friends that also aren't the greatest getting drunk and saying it was me. And then take getting brought in, taking a test, giving them up. Like, it just all sounds like it's connected. These mm -hmm. are the same two people that walked up to another car in the lot and said, you might want to get out of here, essentially. Oh, yeah. When you see a scene like this in those shows and movies where someone makes a confession to some the wrong person in a bar, yeah. you go, okay, why would you do that? It happens. That's so weird, but it's real. So two names. One is Shotgun Man. Yep. We'll get to the second person. So the police now start looking into Shotgun Man. They're casing his joint, sitting outside his house, and they notice somebody living next door to Shotgun Man. The dominoes continue to fall. This neighbor looked just like the composite sketch of the bearded man we saw earlier. So police decided to interview him, Shotgun Man's neighbor. And even though he didn't have an alibi for that night of the murders, police didn't have any evidence so they decided to add him to a lineup because there's not really anything else they can do to press this guy. Interestingly, before bringing the bearded man to the lineup where a witness could testify and see if it was him, the bearded man shaved his beard off for the first time in five years. Take that as you will, but know that the witnesses could not pick out the man that they saw that night in the lineup. <sighs> five years. I really feel like that's just... I don't know, man. That's like a you pull out the red card, you throw the yellow flag down the play, you challenge that, man. Mm -hmm. Like I just that's a, uh, now I know why you say we get so close and it's so frustrating. Yeah, because you're telling me the person that is suspected next door uh -huh. is uh, the other person that looks like this. Uh -huh. Those are your people. Like, ah, uh, like it's I, I so like, weird I'm not, how we got like, here. There's but yeah. so many people that are like wrongfully incarcerated. Sure, you know, so you can't just pull the trigger on things. But it just it lines up so well. And why the hell are you shaving, dude? If I were the police, I would have slapped a, a juicy beard on that guy. I would have been like, <laughs> I don't care that you shaved. This right. is what you looked like, and why we pulled you into yeah. this lineup. It's not going to be four bearded men and and Mr. Clean. Right, <laughs> right. I think, Come on. I, I think the thing that's most frustrating uh -huh. is you're telling me that like this person essentially finangled their way around being spotted in a lineup or being a suspect, et cetera, because they shaved their damn beard. Yeah. Yeah. 
So you, so Jesus. So you're continuing to tell me I got a shot. If I spend the next five years changing everything about my identity to circle around this beard, I get a nice, you know, set of plaid shirts, grow out my scraggly beard. Mm -hmm. And I say, no, I've always had this beard. You're saying I could walk into the nearby HEB, grab a box of s'mores Pop-Tarts and walk out of that place <laughs> scot-free? All I got to do is shave? Mm. I mean, now DNA will get you, but I mean, during <laughs> oh, those times, right. well, yeah. I can't tell you how many times I drool when staring at the boxes of Pop-Tarts, so my DNA would be all over that scene. It'd be slippery, actually. I didn't need oh, to put a, like, put a your, sign down. Your Honor, it, can't, it couldn't be me. I'm clean shaving. The guy in that photo exactly. right there had, I'm a, going, mm, had a nice, going. lush beard that connected from his chest hair down to his ball <laughs> <laughs> Sir, you're eating pop tarts here in court. Mm, everyone loves pop tarts. Come on. But yeah, that that's what threw me so hard when we were researching this case. I was just like, "Come on!" I know, man. It feels like you was right there. And I mean, listen, I'm not gonna push the thing. I'm not gonna sit here and pretend I know it's the guy. But if he looks just like him, and if he's like, he's just a neighbor to the to a guy this drunk man name dropped, which is kind of weird. But like. If he doesn't have an alibi, I feel like that's the spark of something. Sure, he might he might be fine, but he shaved his beard for the first time in five years. I feel like that actually is a tally in the in the I think it's him column to yeah, me, but yeah. that's frustrating. Anyway, let's go to the other name now. Because there was two. The second name led to a man who matched the other composite sketch, the man with fair hair. He also actually had prior arrests for robbing fast food restaurants. Oh, come on, man. However, he himself did not confess to the Burger Chef crimes, nor did he respond to any sort of plea deals. So we've got two people named from this bar confession. The neighbor of one matches beard. The other name matches fair hair. But we got to go back to Shotgun Man for a second. Mm -hmm. He was later arrested for shotgun related crimes. He too denied a plea deal for the Burger Chef crimes. So jumping forward, with no evidence to convict either men, police could do nothing, but that was not the end of these strange, strange events. Both the man from Greenwood and the bearded man died shortly after Shotgun Man was eventually released from prison. So they're all part of it and he didn't want to get outed for something else. Mm -hmm. So we murdered them, his accomplices? It seems very interesting. At least that, that's what's alluring to right me. and this was years later do you remember how many years later it was christian when he was I released do not let me see if i can double check okay yeah because he went to prison on his shotgun related crimes and literally very soon after he got out the other two men went down and ken york who i mentioned earlier told indianapolis tv station wthr that it was quote suspicious strangely also according to york after the bearded man died his son told police that his father the bearded man had confessed to him that he was involved with the Burger Chef murders. Basically saying, to encapture this whole theory, the, this theory just plainly says that it was a gang of individuals and that we are now talking about three of them. The man in the bar may or may not have been part of this group because he had information regarding it. And just because he passed the polygraph test, as we mentioned earlier, doesn't mean that he wasn't still lying. So now there's three or four people that seem oddly suspicious, but two of them are gone and one of them is Shotgun Man. I mean, if all of this is believed to be fact, I mean, it, that that does give a peace of mind. I mean, in, in, the, in a harsh way, peace of mind to the families. That the answer are, was figured out. That like, these were the people and they, they paid for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know what to say. You know what I mean? Like, I'll be honest, if like, a family member of mine was taken away from me and there's someone that fit and matched description, had the priors, like all of it linked up. And then that person was to, to, to go away because they live in that crime world or where they're around bad people or whatnot. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't see how I emotionally don't latch on to that and take solace and then be like, this is the peace of mind that I'm just going to emotionally latch on to to give me right. closure for right. this. Instead of thinking like, like to keep spiraling down the rabbit hole of like there's someone else out there that could murder someone else that could do this to someone else and there's no justice and like yeah yeah so like oh, and it just man. haunts you just like yeah, yeah just like thinking about the emotional side of it you mm -hmm. know what i mean because you know we, we break down a lot of the facts and stuff like that but it's also just like 
that's it's heavy that's the, that's the heavy stuff yeah. that's the gray area right because in the other side of it it's just like no uh, you know what i mean it's like you know uh life is precious you know good or bad or whatever you like you could argue it both ways and mm -hmm. so like there's just so much emotion surrounding it right and so i was just thinking just for a second i'm like oh man what would i do yeah you know, I, do i take solace in that i guess yeah like i don't you know what i mean like you'll never really truly know the answers like no one uh, ever deserves to be in this kind of position if you're like a family member or whatever but like yeah yeah that, that's emotional no i appreciate you indulging in the the emotional side of it and you know empathizing with the family that was kind of going through this when we discuss cases it's easy to get lost in the details of the yeah. dark but i yeah i mean that's something to be considered before you move on oh, yeah, just yeah. to address your question unfortunately in the moment not finding anything on a timeline regarding shotgun man's prison release yeah. or the deaths of the other two men involved so it's all it's too murky to, to say Got anything it. one way or the other yeah that makes sense especially when it's just kind of if you will a standard crime it kind of washes away in the sea of other crimes and facts it is unfortunate though that you have the remaining kind of hanging chads which are shotgun man and what feels like a very loud involvement right with all of this and also i don't know how this man is now kicking it freely outside of prison but whatever and then you also have the other individual who even name dropped them in the first place i feel like i wish police dug deeper there and maybe they did but we just don't have a lot of that information so Nothing came of it, suffice to say, but this next suspect will be very interesting to discuss given this theory. It just makes me wonder, just a, a, as a kind of tease, how many people were actually involved with this, truly, or how many people knew about this, because it feels extensive. Jeez, it's just a burger joint, it's not a bank. So this theory also involves a confession, but years later. In 1984, a man in Pendleton Correction Facility named Donald Forrester called police to confess that he had shot and killed Davis and Shelton. So this is six years later from a man who is incarcerated. He's claiming, I shot those two individuals. Forrester, just for background here, and slight trigger warning, I want to say that, for his offense here, Forrester was a sex offender sentenced to 95 years in prison. This man's locked away for all of it. Forrester was scheduled to be sent to the Indiana State Prison. He had hoped to exchange information on this case in order to avoid going to the maximum security prison. Police were uncertain about Forrester, but he knew information about the case that was not available to the public at the time. So of course, they must indulge in this conversation to yeah, figure out what else to. he knows. Right. Got to do your due diligence. So interestingly, I would love to hear your thoughts as we kind of explore Forrester's claims here, but he knew the exact location of where the bodies were discovered even walking the police there without being told directions. And he knew about the missing knife handle. He himself was from New Whiteland, which is in Johnson County where the bodies were found. And he was living in Speedway when the crime had occurred. A lot of things starting to line up. Forrester also claimed that Freet's brother owed money. So this maybe is where some of the money is coming into play. And his accomplices went to collect it from her at this burger joint maybe why the safe was open and they said if you don't have the money we're gonna certainly find it wild yeah so just to close the loop on that particular thing her brother james reportedly had a history of dealing drugs and this could be why he was in with some bad eggs uh... yeah so this led to flemons trying to defend her in theory and getting injured this could be why his injuries were actually older than the others as we mentioned they were like one to two hours prior to death yeah and so as that theory kind of goes to say, this altercation kind of spurred up, he went in to defend, he took a hit, maybe run off into the woods. Some people also theorize that some of the bludgeoning that he had uh, experienced may have been him either being thrown into trees or running into them. Either way, he succumbed to those wounds. And because then that he passed away on the scene, they might've taken out the three other employees just to close the loop. No witnesses, no right. nothing, and that's why it escalated. So it got heated, he stepped in, got even more heated, accident, someone passes away, oh God, right? I mean, wouldn't you question the brother then to be like, do you know these people? That's a good Have point. You seen these people? That's actually a very good point. Right? Yeah. Like, I feel like that's- Does that implicate him though? So he maybe doesn't want to talk? 
man, but if it helps um, solve your sister's yeah, yeah, I mean, crime, like, I mean, that's a tough situation. Yeah, well, I'll tell you this. I know since it's not in our research here, in our out outline and everything, that there's unlikely to be information on that. But just to cover our bases, I know Christian's going to kind of poke around and see if we can't find anything there. But Forrester's ex-wife now, kind of coming back to this convict who's confessing, his ex-wife claimed that he took her to the site of the murders a few days after they happened in order to retrieve bullet casings. Remember, the 38 caliber firearm was right. used multiple times on these two individuals. She said that they then flushed these 38 caliber casings at their home. Police then went to their home and found the casings in the septic tank at this house. Bada boom, bada bing. We've got some really good information here. I don't know how we got there, but we kind of fumbled into some good answers, I fear. Feel. That's wild. Yeah. But on November 14th, 1986, the fact that Forrester was working with the police was leaked to the public. As a result, Forrester stopped working with them and recanted his statement. Sadly, no other evidence came to the police, and this lead went cold over time. Forrester died in prison in 2006, taking with him any possible information that he could have had that could close this case. The case remains open to this day with a reward of $25,000 offered by Burger Chef for any information. In 2008, family and friends of victims raised money alongside of Speedway community members in order to plant four red oak trees in honor, each adorned with a memorial plaque. And those are the Burger Chef murders of Speedway, Indiana. And I'm surprised, actually, as a Hoosier and Indiana native, that I wasn't aware of this. And maybe I'm grateful for not being aware of this, but um, absolutely wild. This is a this is like one of the very few mysteries where like the answers were right there. Right there. I feel like a mystery is just like it's a bunch of cards on the table, and you just don't know what to flip over, what connects to what. And I feel like they had. The specific cards that gave them the answers and it just couldn't flip the cards over. Mm -hmm. And it's just, oh, it was right there. I mean, I the know. bullet casings. Right. He knew, he knew about like information that wasn't public. The, the person obviously knew them and then even was involved in some way post like crime. Yeah. So in my mind, it was like that crew, mm -hmm. that person, shotgun man. Uh, the the two bearded man, bearded fair man, hair man, fair hair man, like that. That was it. Yeah, like it's weird because this is like probably the first case that goes. Look, that's pretty much the answer. You just you just didn't turn the card over. Like right. the answer is right there on that card. You just legally can't close the loop. Right. Yeah. And I feel like that's the thing. Legally, we can't definitively close that loop. But I feel like it's all there. Yeah, dude. I mean, that's, there's hard evidence. There is hard Confessions evidence. Confessions leading uh, to information that shouldn't have been known and leading to other evidence. Like, this this confession was so strong. I don't know how they didn't press him. But also, he's like, oh, you leaked that to the public. My boys are going to know. I'm going to go quiet. You're in prison, son. Well, the, I would have shoved him right into the max prison. messages and all that kind of stuff, and you can't guarantee I, I protection guess, against I guess. dicey. Uh, my whole thing, too, though, is here's another crazy thing. Oh, I tell you a bunch of stuff. It gets leaked to the public, whatever. Mm -hmm. Hey, you know all that stuff I told you? I, I redacted. I retract my statement. That's that's not... No, nah, I was just kidding. How... At Good that luck. point, it's out of the damn right, jar. Right. Like, what do you mean? I'm going to put all the information back in the damn jar and it wasn't me. I'm uh -huh. not evolved, etc. Like, I feel like at some point, like, you just kind of just go, Your Honor, they know. Right, right. Force them to, like, give the information at this point. Like, I don't know what else. There's a bad person that knows stuff about another bad thing that happened. Like, start cracking knuckles or something. Like, right, dude. Like, I'm sorry, but, like, this person... New, they have evidence, yeah. and you just retract it and you go, ah, but like you can't use it though. That's that's that is wild. I mean, flash cut to me clean shaven now in the court of law, macking on some pop tarts, going, <laughs> all right, mm, mm, I did the it. He's closing the loop. Yeah, I did it. I did it for sure. And then they go, okay, convicted. And I go, ah, just kidding. Just, yeah. I redacted. Yeah, I mean, yeah. and they're, they're not gonna go. Oh, but he redacted it. Dang it. Yeah. They're gonna go. No, you're gone. Like, <gasps> dang. It's frustrating. It and, is I, frustrating. And, I, and I get that. There's rules and regulations sure. and people way smarter than me that have like, you know, put these into place, et cetera. Right. But just as a, 
common person just mm-hmm. listening to that and just go and this person was involved they know right get it out of them well that's the thing too is like when you for every case that feels clear cut like this we can sit here with our hindsight and be like it must have been right there's all these other cases that you kind of need that legal tape to protect innocent yeah, people from yeah, being incarcerated yeah, so you i you know it's frustrating as it is like understandable but one thing i wanted to flag because it's like a trope for our mysteries at this point thank god outside of maybe barman we don't have people pouring out the woodwork to go i did it we have yeah authentic confessions leading to authentic information that raises the stakes raises the bar on what we understand on this case you have the 16 year olds witnessing something that seemed to be materialized we have this individual here forrester so at least it wasn't muddied to heck with people going like for some reason i'll claim it you know that's very true but it's very true but that also makes it more frustrating to me personally but I will say, on oh, the, yeah, yeah, the yeah. question you raised of uh, James's yes. involvement, the only thing I can find is that in 1981, March 5th, 1981, uh, James Freed was arrested for possession of and intent to distribute cocaine. Okay. And that did fuel the investigator's belief that drugs may have been a part of it, and they actually did reopen the case. Got it. Immediately after that, it didn't go anywhere. So that's why, you know, as we discuss the case, it's a very, is it, drugs is it money sort of thing and both seem very solid foundations yeah so it is confirmed that that james the the brother was arrested on drug charges and that they did look into a possible connection with that and the burger chef murders Mm -hmm. but nothing he didn't have any confessions to make or any information they couldn't find anything after that all right i mean the uh level of uh narcotics adds up right I don't feel like it's would go down over weed. No. Cocaine's pretty high level They'd all drug. be snacking on those burgers pretty and sitting on the floor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and and <laughs> one, of them, one of them would be at the cash register waiting for a customer and going, why is it stinking here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, right. that was a great mystery. It's, it's, it's simple yet elegant all right. at once. Man, Task Force, thank you all so much for continuing to listen to Red Web giving those five-star reviews, whether it be Apple Play, Spotify, Google Play, all those places. Yeah, keep Christian here. Keep be, Christian we here. appreciate it. Yeah, no, well, I we, appreciate it too. We, we, put <laughs> a, um, we put a safety belt on that seat just so he doesn't <laughs> fall out whenever we shock him. But also it's childproof, so he can't undo it. He's, yeah. he's been strapped to the chair ever since we have Been trying for about it. two years now. <laughs> <laughs> but thank Tough. you all so much for supporting us. Uh, if you want to get any of our merchandise to continue... Allowing us to do what we do, store.roosterteeth.com. Otherwise, your word of mouth means so much to us just sharing this podcast with a friend of yours so you can kind of indulge in these mysteries and maybe theorize with uh, with what you've got yourself among your social group. But otherwise, Fredo, Christian, everyone else, I'll see you right back here next week for yet another mystery. Mystery.